Today, we're going to talk about autonomy levels in Replitagent. So for the first time, you can control how autonomous or independent agent is. And there are four different modes, low, medium, high, and max. We're going to talk about each mode and when you might use them. So what you'll notice is that each autonomy mode basically adds additional functionality to agent. So in our first mode, low autonomy, agent's only going to act on tasks that you give it. That means it's best for simple projects where you want really granular control over the changes that are being made. So some good examples here are simple prompts, UI tweaks, hot fixes to your application, or other small bug fixes where you sort of have a known outcome and you're really just prompting agent to get a fast result. I actually really like this autonomy mode because sometimes I want to build in a very hands-on way and I just want agent to make small tweaks. So low autonomy is really great for that if I want to stay engaged and have a really tight feedback loop and iterate quickly on my app. So next up, we have medium autonomy mode and medium adds the ability for agent to review the latest code changes and implement fixes. What does that mean? It means agent is going to check the code that it just wrote, not the entire application, we'll get to that later, um, and fix itself proactively. So if you have a bit more time, if you're willing to let agent run for a little longer, medium autonomy mode might be a great fit because it's going to catch mistakes that agent wouldn't catch in low autonomy mode and fix them for you. Now, it's not as tight of a feedback loop, so you're not going to get feedback as fast. An agent's going to run longer, but we think this is a really good trade-off between speed and code that works more often. So consider medium autonomy mode if you're okay giving a bit more control over to agent and you want that self-fixing functionality. Medium autonomy is great for imported code where you want to remain in the loop a little bit, uh, but you can let agent do more work. It's also great for bug fixes with some unknowns where you want to hand off some of the discovery work to agent or moderate timelines where you want some quality assurance without a super long run. Next, we have high autonomy mode, and this just expands the scope of self-testing to the entire app. So in medium autonomy, agents testing the code it just wrote and some of the features it's working on in that setting. But with high autonomy, agent's testing the entire app every time you make a change. So you implement a new feature, agent will go through, it'll test the entire app. That's a much more independent or sort of self-sufficient agent, if you will. And what this means is that high autonomy is really thorough and it's great for new projects or projects where you're building out functionality from scratch. It's also our recommendation for the best hands-off experience for agent and the default for new agent projects. That means high autonomy is really great for new projects or projects where you're trying to build out entire features. Complicated refactors or features with a really high quality bar are also great for high autonomy mode because agent's gonna be able to do a lot more work in one sitting. Finally, we have max autonomy. And this adds the ability for agent to plan and execute on entire scopes of work without your input. So with max autonomy, agent's going to write a task list, execute on that task list, and then test your entire application. From there, it's going to plan and implement the next functionality independently of your input. And this is for a long-running, hands-off building experience. So for example, in this whiteboard application I built, this was one prompt and about a 75 or 80 minute run, created a real-time whiteboard with web sockets and advanced data storage. Similarly, in this plant identifier app, this was two prompts also running over the course of 75 minutes that created a complete plant identifier app with structured outputs from Anthropic. And if you've built with the Anthropic API before, you know that JSON mode or structured outputs can be really difficult to implement on your own. So this max autonomy mode is really useful for large refactors um, or exploratory builds and multi-step features where agent can work independently to arrive at your outcome. And I would say really go with max autonomy if you're biasing thoroughness over speed. For example, you might have something going on, you have a few hours where you're busy, but you have a really great idea. You can kick that prompt off to agent's max autonomy mode, come back a few hours later, and you should have something that feels like a more robust piece of software. You can toggle the autonomy modes from the agent settings pane within the Replit workspace. So as you're building your next project, think about your style of working at that moment uh, and make a choice between low all the way up to max autonomy that suits how you would like to iterate with agent, how fast you want those feedback loops to be, um, or maybe if you want them to be a bit longer, a bit more hands-off. I'm Matt with Replit. This has been Autonomy Modes in the new Replit agent. Until next time, peace.